Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you a very cool product, and I mean that literally. What you see here is a 30-quart portable refrigerator or freezer. It can be powered by 12 volts or 24 volts DC, as well as 110 volts or 220 volts AC using the included power supply. The best part about this cooler, it only uses 45 watts, which is really great if it does draw 45 watts. We're going to be checking that out. So if you need a small, low power consumption refrigerator or freezer for your solar shed, for long road trips, camping, fishing, or even a day at the beach if you bring along a 60 watt solar panel, then this one may be for you. I'm going to be testing this out to make sure it performs well, and we're also going to open it up to see exactly how it works. Now there are a lot of coolers sold online that are thermoelectric. They use a Peltier or Pelty module, which you see right over here. And that module uses two dissimilar metals connected together and when current is applied, one side becomes hot, the other side becomes cold. The problem with that, they're not very efficient. Inside this unit here is a very small compressor and it uses R134A refrigerant. This was sent to me by the manufacturer, but if I see something that I do not like, of course, you will hear me say it. So let's get started. Now the cooler is made out of a hard plastic. The lid does not dent in. You can sit on it, which I'll show you in a minute. You can hear it's solid. The bottom of this unit has four rubber feet that are very thick. These are two extras that are included, one on each corner. Included is this power cord for 12 volts. Plugs into your accessory socket in your vehicle. And also this AC power supply. This works with 110 volts or 220 volts as long as you have the right adapter for the end. This one here is for US or North American. And of course you get the manual and it has a two year warranty. In case you're wondering the dimensions, it's 22.7 inches long, 12.6 inches wide, and 15 and a half inches tall or 57.7 centimeters long, 32 centimeters wide, and 39.4 centimeters tall. The weight of this cooler is 30.6 pounds or 14 kilograms. Now the manufacturer says not only does it only draw 45 watts, which is incredibly low, but it takes only 15 minutes to lower the temperature inside this cooler or freezer by 45 degrees. We're going to test that out. Right here you can see what the sides of the unit look like. You have molded handles to allow you to pick this up very easily. You can see on the one side there's a bunch of ventilation openings for the compressor with the condenser. And you can see the power cord plugs into that side where it says 1224. This cooler has a digital readout on the screen. Power button. This locks and unlocks the settings. Raise the temperature higher or lower. And right over here you have a USB type A port. We're going to test that out as well to see how much power it can supply. Before I open this up to show you the inside, let me sit on it first. I'm going to lift my legs up just to show you that this will not dent in and it's very strong. And it is solid. I don't feel any movement and I'm 165 pounds or 75 kilograms. Let's take a look at the inside. Nice seal all around the edges. And right over here there's a little bit of a raised edge that sticks up around the perimeter that goes right into that rubber seal. This unit's designed to go sub-zero. We're going to see exactly how low it gets. Looking down on the refrigerator freezer you can see how big it is on the inside. Have this chain to make sure the cover does not swing all the way back when you open it. And you also have this divider that comes out very easily. If you want to separate food from drinks, if you don't want to use this, just pull it out and use the entire area. Now to start the testing off, I have my power supply unit connected. It's set for 12.6 volts. And you can see with this turned off, just the circuitry inside the unit powered up, it's drawing 45 milliamps of current, 45 to 46. So what I want to do is put the camera directly on the control panel and I want to perform the test while this is warm to see if it actually drops as much as they said it will in that 15 minute period of time. So let me put the camera right over there. You'll be able to hear the compressor when it comes on, how loud the unit is or how quiet it is. 
and I'll have the other camera looking at the power supply. You'll see the current reading displayed. Okay, let's turn this on. Push and hold for three seconds. Showing 69, you can see the voltage. You hear how quiet that is when it came on. So let me lower the temperature really low because I want to see how long it's going to take this to drop in temperature over that 15 minute period. It says minus eight Fahrenheit. Right now we're at 69 and you can see how much current is flowing on the power supply unit. I'm going to close the door. And I'm going to see how long it takes. I'm going to push this right here to drop 45 degrees. Now there's a little bit of a voltage drop between the power supply unit and the freezer. That's why the voltage displayed on the freezer is a little bit lower. But if you take the voltage on the freezer and you multiply that times the current that's flowing, so that much is accurate so far. It does draw right around 45 watts. And we're getting very close to that 45 degree drop which is at 24 degrees Fahrenheit. Compressor nice and quiet. And the wattage has been fluctuating between 42.5 and 46. And we just reached 24. And right here you can see how long it took. So it took almost 10 minutes longer than the manufacturer said. I really don't mind waiting an extra 10 minutes, but it's definitely not going to cool down 45 degrees in just 15 minutes once you plug it in. I noticed that this is not perfectly flat on the floor. You may get a little bit of a rattle. So with this unit, you want to make sure all four feet are firmly on the ground. The next thing I want to do is see how low we can actually get this to go. Okay, let's do this. Let's bring it all the way down and then I want to check it against my thermometer. And as you can see here, it was very close, only one degree Celsius off. The lowest temperature for this unit is right around minus six Fahrenheit. And for those of you that are wondering, the temperature of the lid, right around 74.5, which is pretty good. And over here, where the refrigeration coils are that wrap around, 69.7. So it's about a five degree temperature difference between the lid and these walls. Over there, of course, it's hotter because that's where the condenser and the compressor is located. If there was food inside, it would take longer to cool down. And if the food was frozen solid, the temperature would not rise as quickly to turn the unit back on. Now the next test, I wanna see how often this is going to cycle on and off once something inside is frozen. So I'm going to take some food out of my freezer that's set right around 3 degrees Fahrenheit and I'm going to place it inside this unit, close it, let it turn on, bring it to the right temperature and I want to see how long it's going to take before the unit has to cycle on and off, on and off. Frozen bag of veggies, frozen pineapple, and some blackberries. Okay, we're at 3 degrees Fahrenheit probably around four or five this will turn on again. While I'm waiting for that, let's take a look at the USB output, see what kind of power we can get. Right there you see one amp. That's the current draw setting. Five volts right now. Let's turn it on. 4.9 watts, 4.9 volts, very good. 9.4 watts and we're just starting to break down a little bit. You see it flickering 4.7 the fan came on 2.5 11.5 half watts 11.7 4.7 still sufficient to charge Wow, this might put out three amps. Let's go up to three Fourteen watts it's starting to go on and off. So right around 2.75 amps, so that's pretty good. Now what I noticed about this freezer or refrigerator is once you set the temperature, in this case to three degrees, the temperature will cool down to that level. The compressor turns off, it turns back on when the temperature rises 
four degrees above the set temperature. So in this case, it did not turn back on until it read seven degrees on the display. It turns out it's roughly 10 minutes for the cooler to warm up to that seven degree temperature where it turns on the compressor and then it takes about 10 minutes to go from seven degrees back down to three. The company does sell an optional insulated carry bag and it's very nice. And what that would do is you could put this entire cooler inside of it. You can operate the cooler while it's inside that carry bag. It has a nice shoulder strap to make this easier to carry around. But the biggest benefit is you're going to save on energy because the added insulation is going to make this cycle less. Now let's see if it operates using 24 volts. As you can see right here, if you had two batteries connected in series, there would be no problem at all powering this unit. The current level used is only one and three quarter amps because the voltage is double. Now let's take a closer look at the control panel. Turning on the refrigerator freezer is very simple. Push and hold this button for three seconds until the display comes on. Now there's a couple of things I want to show you. Now over here it's got five degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's very simple. You can switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius. All you have to do is push this button here and hold it and then push this button. And now it's switched to Celsius. You push this button and hold it and then push this button and now you're back. Now over here you see it says max cooling. That's what I use for all the demonstrations you just saw. There's also another mode. So you push this right here and you push it again and it says eco. Let it set. Now what that setting is going to do is going to save you on energy but it's going to take longer for this to cool down. So if you put it on this setting at this voltage like your car battery Instead of using 45 watts, it's going to only use around 29 or 30. So that's an incredibly low level. So there is a pretty good energy savings, but it's going to be running longer. So let me just turn this on to show you, and you can see it. Let's set this. All right, let that sit for a minute. Go back. It's going to set up in a minute. Now I'm going to push. Let's go down to zero. And once that sets, it'll turn on. There we go. Very quiet when it starts up. Now the last thing I want to show you right over here it says H. So let's push and hold this. And now you can push this up and down. It says low, medium, high. And let me show you in the manual what that is. Now the low, medium, and high is used for battery protection. So if you have this inside your vehicle at night and it's plugged into an accessory socket and it's running for hours on end, it more than likely, because it's such a low current draw, not going to drain the battery. But in the event it gets too low the battery, it's going to turn off the compressor to protect the battery from over discharge. So on the high mode, if the battery voltage gets below 11.3, this will turn off, but you need 12.5 volts or higher in order to turn this on. If you want to have a lower setting, you can go to the medium mode there, you can have 11.4 volts as the minimum power to turn this on and you can go all the way down to 10.1 and on a low mode you can have 10.9 or higher to turn this on or 9.6 volts to shut it off and over here is the voltage different levels that you would have for 24 volts works perfectly I did test it so over here I'm just going to give you a very quick demonstration I'm going to leave it on the high mode and I'm going to lower the input voltage below 12.5. Now let's try turning this on. To unlock you push and hold. Now let's lower the temperature and it should give us an error. There you go. Error 1. Error 1 in the manual says low input voltage. So now to get out of there I'm just going to go back here again. I can lower it to medium and it will work, so watch. Okay. Now just turn it on and off, and it should reset and start right up. There you go. See, on that mode, it's allowing us to use that voltage level all the way down to 
And for those of you wondering, I did test powering this unit using a solar panel and it works just fine as long as you use, at a minimum, a 60 watt solar panel to allow for the startup surge on max cool. You're also going to need an inexpensive, high efficiency 5 amp step down converter like you see right here. And you're going to have to set the regulated output between 13 volts and 14.5. Right here's what it looks like with the cover removed. This wire connects to the back side of the cover where the 12 24 volt input is located. Right over here is a fuse holder. Inside is a 15 amp fuse. Here's your compressor, hermetically sealed. You have a high pressure discharge coming around and it goes into the condenser. You can see it right back here. There's a cooling fan on this side. The high pressure leaves. It's full of high pressure liquid refrigerant. It goes through this filter dryer into the capillary tube. Then it goes all the way inside the unit to the evaporator. Here's the return line or the suction line which is the low pressure going back to the compressor. On this side over here, you can see the control board with the heat sink. And that is it. I hope you enjoyed this product review. If you did, be sure to rate, thumbs up, share, and check out my extensive video playlist for many other videos of interest to you. Thanks for watching.